Our heroes are headed towards a lake of flames. Let's hope they keep their head in the game. This week on D and D minus. are plummeting from hundreds of feet in the air towards a lake of fire. I remember why. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? Can can you actually give us like a quick before we start? Yeah, I don't I don't know what the hell's going on, Eli. <laughs> so you went, I mean it was like 2 weeks ago. At this at this point it's like a sign of dementia when you guys don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? When when it was once a month, I get it, but it was like, come on now. So let's see. You made it to Avernus. You went to the Bronze Citadel. Actually, I could I could do an Achum thing if you want. Oh, sure. Yeah. Last time. So basically what we did was we got to the, the we got off onto the land and we were in the boat. We got off onto the land. We dodged about a bunch of fire. I mean, we dodged around a bunch of fire, but some of us dodged around a bunch of fire. Some yes. Some of us yes. dodged a bunch of fire. I had a very, very sexual encounter with some grass. Then we went over a bridge. Well, some of us went over a bridge. Did you say sexual encounter with some grass? Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm, it had to be there. Oh, it was the whips that were coming out yes, of the grass? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And anyway, so then we uh, get to the city and we looked around. I tried to get some very interesting intel on the vermin in the town, but they were not helpful. And uh, <laughs> then we, the lady who runs the town, she's really sad. Let's see. Uh, yes, she's really sad because she needs to know what's happening at the front of the line. And she's gotten to this whole emo thing like she can't too sad to do it. And so we joined the army and we are being sent to the front lines of a war between, I don't know, hell and hell. And uh, then, uh, yeah, they uh, woke us up with a catapult. Yeah, it's a war between demons and devils, which is like... Demons and devils. Devils are lawful, demons are chaotic. Yeah, horns and horns. That was racist. That was so <laughs> racist. <laughs> oh, man, if there are demons or devils listening to this podcast, <laughs> they're shutting it off right now. You wear a lot of hoods. That's what it is. <laughs> uh, you know what? You know what? You're, you're right about that. You Come in here close. I want to tell you something. I curse you. I curse you all. I curse you all. I curse you. I curse you. First of all, I have two things that are important to me now, spiritually. One, I now picture this as like the, you know how they did that horrible thing when Walking Dead was on the air where they would then like do a talk back with the actors about like, well, how about that episode? Yes. That's how I picture Anna Sum Ups is it's the characters from the show sitting on like red plush couches with fucking Ryan Stiles or whatever the fuck his name was. Like that's what I'm picturing happens during the summaries in between episodes now. And two, you wear a lot of hoods was brilliant. And I feel like we didn't appreciate it. Enough. I just <laughs> want to throw that out there. <laughs> oh, I know the audience will get it, but I just, I, I need to plant a flag. It's important to me. <laughs> oh God. I don't like that. So that's, that's the rundown. Okay. Yeah, that's right. We were being catapulted into the battle. That's mm. right. We're being a chuma pulled. A <laughs> fuck you guys. I curse you all. <laughs> <laughs> One final rundown question. The the woman who is in charge of the town is the part I only vaguely remember. How did that come about? Zariel. Yeah, we needed her to get the key to get to the next level of hell or something. Like a zany little mermaid. Correct. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. So we're, we're trying to buddy up to her. Yeah. yeah. By getting intel from the front lines exactly. of the horny war. Exactly. Nice, the horny war. Oh, maybe that'll catch on. But yeah, now the five of you are plummeting in your cots, hundreds of feet in the air towards a lake of pure fire. What do you do? Oh, I I'm a cat. I will land on my feet. In lava? <laughs> I meant to do this. This is, this is fine. <laughs> it's all fine. Okay, Achum has resigned I'm, himself to death. No. <laughs> Anyone else have any other ideas? I'm looking. Short season. Good season, but short season, everybody. Good stuff. <laughs> I don't have anything that would help in this instance. I'd like to perceive. 
Yeah, mm. it's gonna. We'll search around the new characters and we'll find something. Uh, well, li- listen, listen. Let me see what I got. Oh, maybe we could do perception checks. Yeah, roll some perception checks. Or I could make it all smell like pie. (laughs) That would make it more pleasant. Yeah, when I asked to perceive, that's what I was going for. Oh, okay. I had no idea what the fuck that meant. You were like, I would like to, I thought you said receive. So I had absolutely no (laughs) No, idea. I would like to perceive. uh, I was referring to perception when I said that. Yes. Okay. Yeah, there you go. All right. I thought you just said, I would like to receive. And I was like, oh, he wants the sword that flies back. (laughs) But then you just said, I would like to receive. I do have the sword. Let me get those perception checks, babies. Nine. 17. I'd like to passively perceive. That's a net fucking 20. Oh, okay. Here's what I will tell you, Achu. With a nat 20, Mm. the sheets on these cots. Should we not listen right now? No, none of you can listen. None of you know this. (laughs) Only Achu knows this. Everyone else get off the call. (laughs) Achu, with a nat 20, the sheets on these cots are very thin and an almost plasticine material. Mm. And you feel like if you act quickly, you might, might be able to use them as some kind of parachute situation. Mm. Oh, okay. I was thinking like a slip and slide scenario. Mm. I thought we were launched off of cots. I don't know. I didn't realize our Mm. cots were launched off of your cots were launched as well. Yes. Okay. I also didn't picture that, but I understand now. I feel like I could have perceived that with a nine that there was a cot there. <laughs> Use your um, parachute. Parachutes. Nice. All right. Okay. Just sh- parachutes. Yep. Parachutes. Yeah. What would that be? What kind of check would that be? Well, what are you going to do with them? I'm telling you that the material is there. We're going to use parachutes. We're going to do exactly <laughs> what you said to do. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you the material's there. I'm telling you it's possible, but I want you to tell me how you do it. Mm. I would like to do what Eli explained. Yeah. <laughs> how big is the lake of fire that we're seeing? So you're going right into the center of it, but it's probably only 50 feet across. Okay. So mm. I'm thinking we like paraglide past it, right? Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, we don't parachute slowly into the lava. (laughs) (laughs) You gonna tie some sheets together? Yeah. Mm, Oh, absolutely. (laughs) All right. Are you having one of you do it? We're gonna yes. We're gonna literally manufacture parachutes (laughs) while falling in the air. Exactly. This is incredibly interesting. Everybody, make a dexterity check for me. All right. I call it a dexterity saving throw. Actually, (laughs) sixteen. I'm rolling great tonight. Ten. Mm Hmm. I am not rolling. That is a five. 16. So that sucks. I'm going to quickly pull out my loot. While one hand is going to play the loot like Van Halen style, one hand is going to tie the parachute knot and I'm going to cast Bardic Inspiration on a Choom. Oh, does that mean I get to roll again? No, but you get an extra D8 to your roll. Oh, let's read. I'm going to need that D8. If you kill a Choom, Eli, I will never forget. <laughs> I didn't kill a Choom. You killed a I feel a like a Choom is the least killable character. <laughs> ah, that's an eight. Okay. <laughs> so that'll bring me up to a 13. A Choom just like slowly lowers into the lava with like one paw thumb up. Like the fucking turn. <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right. So you managed to get these blankets together. I'm going to have you all run a strength check now. All right. Okay. If you hit a 10 average... Amongst the four of you, you manage to keep hold of the parachute and you will paraglide to the edge of this lava lake. Anything else? And you're going in. All right. So strength saving throw or strength check? Uh, Saving throw, please. I am not going to help the average. Me neither. I got 14. Five. Six. Gravy, it's on you. 17. Okay. Okay. You got us. Well, we'll wait for Eli to figure that out. It's yes. over 40. So <laughs> yeah. we're you good. did it. You did it. <laughs> oh, yeah, here, I hear the sweat trickling down your forehead right now. I uh, I didn't actually finish the math. I just knew how long it was taking. I was still on 17 plus five. And I just feel like uh, I didn't, I I gave the impression that I was done with the right, math no, when I said good. you did it. And I, if I'm being honest, if I'm being radically vulnerable and what place if not this, I'm still on 17 plus five. I'm kind of doing it while I talk. 
<laughs> All right. You skate to the edge of the lake of fire. That seems like a really inefficient way of uh, getting new people to uh, the front lines. Yeah. I feel like they lose a lot of them in the lava. <laughs> yeah. I think this is the yeah. first thing we should tell her, really, is to stop yep, doing yep. this. Yes, indeed. Back. Did you just say we have parachutes before the, the, the launch, right? That'd be helpful, too. I mean, that would help, but that wouldn't solve the problem. I think mm -hmm. this, <laughs> that's not a solution. <laughs> that's a Band-Aid, not medicine. <laughs> So you look around the shore of this lake of fire and find the ground littered with the dead. There are skeletons everywhere, rusty swords and shields. What you don't see is any sign of a front line or a devil army at all. One other thing, about 50 feet in front of you, you see a giant tear in space time. Ooh. Now, through that tear, a Ooh. similar hell plane can be seen. But before you can examine it further, a voice from somewhere behind you says, Ah, excuse me. <laughs> mm. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You turn and notice that at the top a pile of shields, swords, and skeletons in a suit of armor sits a small devil. I'm talking like uh, squirrel-sized, grasping a tiny spear. And he says, Um... You guys might want to turn around. We turn around, but like dramatically. Yeah. 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 Right. Sorry. Just to be clear, turn around like because we were facing. He was behind us. So now we turn around towards the rift or. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. With the way we were facing when he got our attention in the first place. Right. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Just making sure. So we just did a little twirly twirl. Yep. A little twirl. Well, basically what you did is you pivoted right to look at the tear. Then you pivoted right again to look at him. Now he's turning you back around to the original towards the lake. Just so you know, people will know that you pivoted in front of your mic when we have this. <laughs> Thank you, Morgan. Thank you. This is why we pay you the big bucks. Get that full 3D sonic pivoting experience. No, it'll happen naturally because you turned. Hey, devil guy, when you say next week, what do you mean by that? When you say that? <laughs> oh, don't get me started, man. I'm supposed to be helping you out. I'll let you die. Okay, oh. so like not the normal use of the word next, like you do the other thing. You know what the word means. Okay. I'm not doing this with you. Not on air. Not now. <laughs> but as you turn, you hear a faint hiss coming from inside the lake behind you. You'd almost think it was the crackle of the fire itself, except it's getting louder and growing in number. And before you can explore, five bright red and dangerous looking snakes emerge from the lake and they look hungry. Everybody... Roll some initiative for me. Oh, boy, another fight. It's a nine. Fourteen. And I got 19. Gravy got five. All right. Well, I've got a little surprise for you because we were just given access to the alpha ooh, mm. of D&D &D Beyond's map function. So if you check the chat. Oh, dear. Oh, God. Of our Zencaster. <laughs> oh, God. New technology. I bet this goes really well. Yeah. It's going to so go gonna great. We're going to alpha test it. This is worse than a beta test. <laughs> Eli, your DM is not currently, not currently hosting, hosting a game, hosting game, session. game session. Yeah, that's an I alpha am. test. There you yes, go. I am. No. No. Should we reload it? I'm doing it again. Come on. <laughs> keep this. Morgan, keep all of this. Wait, wait. Loading map. Oh, there it is. There it is. Oh. Oh. oh loading. Oh. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> so, so this okay. tiny little devil who's about to give us information and snakes just popped out and we're just like, <laughs> we're just buffering for a second. Do you guys see my cute little avatar? Do you see my avatar? Oh, your avatar is adorable. <laughs> yeah. See? See, don't you guys want avatars now? And I can why, move your why characters am I going, around. Why am I over? There? Stop moving me. I, I <laughs> move. Oh. Hey, hey, hey! You're giving smooches. <laughs> no, what? Smooches. No, what? The smooches. Fire. What? Smooches. That's not fair. Oh, I can move me too. Okay, so this giant frost skeleton is not a giant frost skeleton. It's the big pile of bones. <laughs> I feel like at the end you're going to go, and then a giant frost skeleton arises <laughs> behind you, and we're going to go, like, yeah, we can see it, man. Where is the tiny little devil on top of the pile? He is over here on top of the giant frost skeleton. Are you sure he's not a giant frost skeleton? I feel like he's a giant frost skeleton who's disguised himself. I think he's a giant frost you. skeleton. God damn, yeah. he's not. And then these these aren't fire into <laughs> elementals. <laughs> You're They're nailing the lake. this. <laughs> They're the lake. I made them into a lake. Stop moving the lake. Those are the lake. Stop moving the lake. <laughs> so the lake <laughs> is made of a collection of fire elementals? <laughs> not 
<laughs> not in the canon oh, no. of oh, our yeah, stop we it. We just move the snakes where we want. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to put them back won. on the other side. Yeah. 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 I'm just going to hit this guy with a bunch of fire <laughs> elementals. <laughs> This is oh, awesome. who did that? Oh, I, All right, I, I don't even in. need to roll for this shit. All right, <laughs> yeah, so that guy's that, dead because of I put fire <laughs> elementals on him. Wait, I'm gonna save him. I'm saving him. I'm saving him. He's going over here. Me and me and this giant frost skeleton are having a grand uh, old time. Just, oh no, he ate me. Wait, this is where did I go? Great radio. This is the best. I was gonna say I know this is the worst radio <laughs> possible, but it is the most fun I think we've ever I'm had. So happy. Hey, so hey, hey. Fire snake, what's what's going on over here? They're, they're like doing some <laughs> havoc over there, but I'm just like, so how is it going? Like, what's your daily day to do? Okay, like, everybody, everybody, what? we have to get back to the radio show that we do. There's for a Jags a game on, damn it. Yeah, okay, that's right. Sorry. Do it for the Jags. Do it for the sweet, sweet Jags. All right. So now you see where everything is. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Fire snake is up first. Really? He beat a 19. Yeah, got a 22. Yeah. We're dealing with five fire snakes, I see. Five fire snakes. See, isn't this great? You guys don't have to ask. You could just be mm. like, five fire snakes. Yeah. We still obviously ask. <laughs> <laughs> they popped out of the fire and they just like slithered a little bit out of the lake onto the land. Yeah. And they lined up. Yeah. As though they were waiting for me to say, everybody roll initiative Got for it. me. Oh, I see. How big are the fire snakes? Oh, that's a great question. They are the size of a large serpent. That's not great. Come on. <laughs> One large yes unit. They're five feet. Okay. They're five feet long. You know how I know? Because it's on the board. Because it's in the board. Fire snake number one is going to come up, give a chum a chomp. No. Ouch. I curse yes. you. I curse you. That's going to be a five. That's not going to hit. That is not going to hit. All right. So it's going to miss you. I'm a cat. Look at my butthole. And that's its turn. Achoom, you are up. This snake is towering <laughs> over you, having snapped its jaws over your head. <laughs> God damn it. You guys brought Don Ford here. <laughs> I put him in the fire. I put him it's in the fire. Fawn Dord. Put, put Don Ford in the fire. I made Fawn Dord to stand next to me and help. <laughs> Fawn Dord would want this. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. I can't tell if the ice guy is on our side yet. Mm, I think that's the squirrel. That really is just a pile of bones. Oh, oh, that's, oh, okay. That's what you were actually saying. That is yes. not a giant ice guy. That's the, that's the pile of bones. Okay, yeah. cool. Oh, frost giant skeleton is representing the pile that the tiny little devil guy is standing on. Yes. I have not yet been given access to piles pile of bones. Of bones. <laughs> You have to, I mean, you can't be trusted with fire elementals and Fondor, and I've, I can see why they didn't give you that. I mean, guys, I, I don't know how to break this to you, but uh, this is like the best map I did. They get um, <laughs> less good than this map. All right, so I actually need to create something for mine. This map doesn't even go on the fridge if you're five, man. This yeah, is no, rough. it's not. It's not awesome. I would like to cast Maximilian's Earthen Grasp. Ooh, yeah. Read that spell description for me. New shit. You choose a five foot square unoccupied space on the ground that you can see within range. A medium hand made from compacted soil rises there and reaches for one creature you can see within five feet of it. The target must make a strength saving throw. On a failed save, the target takes 2d6 bludgeoning damage and is restrained for the spell's duration, which is concentration for one minute. As an action, you can cause the hand to crush the restrained target who must make a strength saving throw. It takes 2d bludgeoning damage on a failed save or half as much on a successful one. To break out, the restrained target can use its action to make a strength check against your saving spell save. On a success, the target escapes and is no longer restrained by the hand. As an action, you could cause the hand to reach for a different creature or to move to a different unoccupied space. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to grab that thing. So strength save. Strength saving throw of 14. Mm-hmm. That's an 11. Whoa, it's caught. I'm going to roll that damage for you. How about that? Please do. Mm, that's eight damage. Eight damage. All right. So this hand comes bursting out of the ground and grabs this snake around the neck like baby Hercules and just 
slams it into the earth and holds it there. Mm -hmm. And it gets to try to break out of that on its turn, right? Yep. Okay. Bonus actions, movements, anything? For movement, I will, because he's like restrained, I'm going to just like take a little doo 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 back here, back towards the pile. I feel like the devil guy might attack too. Just be careful. I'm, oh, the devil guy is a pile of rocks. Eli just told us. I thought he was standing on But the yeah, the little rocks. raccoon devil guy is, is oh, yeah, still no, no, I'm, I'm small, not gonna... but he's got a spear and he's a literal devil. And he's standing on top of a pile of bones like a fucking money python <laughs> rabbit. Yeah, It's pretty ominous. It is. It it's is. about the most ominous thing except for the size, but I think that might make it worse in my head. You know what I mean? I think he's on our side. Well, he said he was. Yeah. True. We don't know if he... That's exactly what a devil would try to do and make it seem like. They're deceivers, notoriously. That's yeah. that's <laughs> a known thing. It will still get an attack of opportunity on you if you move. Just so you Really? Know. Even though yeah. even though he's on the ground, prone? And restrained? Even though he's restrained. Yeah, I just Googled it. All right, go for it. Fucking go for it. Yeah, let him have it. Let him try. Let him try. Exactly. Let him try. Let him do it. Bring all comers. Let's do it. I don't fucking care. I was born in the dark. <laughs> He rolled a two. Okay. Well, he sucks. So <laughs> Eli's become like spiritually connected to this fire snake. Yeah. He I am. I'm quite literally going to turn my back and walk away and do that like tail directly in the air thing and like oh, literal look it. at my butt. We love to see it as I'm walking away. I curse you. I say it over my shoulder as I go. Hey, everybody. Thank you once again for listening to the show. It's me, Eli, the host of the podcast you've been listening to. So I don't know why I needed to introduce myself, but you know what? I do it to Noah, so why not do it to myself? Anyways, hey, are you enjoying this podcast? Are you loving this podcast? Would you like us not to starve to death? Well, then have you considered giving us money over at Patreon? dot com forward slash d n d minus all spelled out for as little as a dollar you get a commercial free version of the show that doesn't have this middle part where i make myself introduce myself and whenever we have sponsors you don't have to hear them as well but you also get access to bonus episodes and all sorts of cool stuff behind the scenes bonus questions with me called dungeon masters corners all sorts of cool stuff going on for our patrons over at patreon.com forward slash D and D minus throw us a buck. We're super duper grateful, but Hey, maybe you don't have a dollar. That's fine. We understand. We have all not had dollars at various points in our lives. And that's why you can give us a five-star review wherever you get your podcasts for free. That's right. For free. It costs zero dollars for you to promote us up in the rankings, which by the way, really, really worked this month. We were number 16 in the United States in the hobbies category, thanks to all the amazing reviews that y'all write. So we are super grateful for that. All that said, thanks so much for listening to the show. We'll be back in two weeks with your next episode. Thanks again for listening. Damien, you are up. Okay. So if this map is correct, we are about 25 feet from the kind of front line of fire snakes, right? Fuck yeah, you are. Okay. So then I... God, I love this map. I love it so much. <laughs> I am going to, in a very cowardly looking way, hightail it and get back behind the bones. Sure. You're going to take an uh, attack of opportunity because this fire snake is right next to you. But it wasn't engaged with me. Yeah, it wasn't. Oh, that's right. Yep. Good catch. Come on now. Perfect. What do you think this is? Season one? Five. Oh, all right. 15, 20, 25, 30, Were you trying to like bluff 40, 45, 50. Morgan into getting <laughs> hit by that? <laughs> no, I just forgot how that works. I love that Don Ford is just chilling in the lake of fire. Yeah. Sorry, Fondord. He's a fire snake now. Fondord does not get to join the fire snakes. That's not okay. So from where I am square wise, the fire snake like directly in line with me should be Less than 60 feet away. Mm -hmm. So I am going to cast... Oh, I haven't told you guys this. Besides having a loot, I also have bagpipes and a dulcimer. Ooh. What is a dulcimer? Dude, a dulcimer oh, a is like... a hammer those, dulcimer or just a yeah, dulcimer dulcimer? If they're like big. Like you cannot carry one, but 
we're going to say that I carry one. Tell me about hammer dulcimer first. Let's assume that's the one you No have. need to explain further, Morgan. That's cool. That's fine. <laughs> that's like, uh, it's like a sideways harp, but you play it with little, ha- like little, like, Drumstick, so it goes. Yeah, it's like the inside of a piano. It's like the inside of a piano that you carry around. Yep. Awesome. And you carry two of those little mallets that are inside the piano too, mm-hmm. on the ends of sticks. When you Google dulcimer, the third suggested YouTube video is so fucking trash. It's people in matching blue jeans playing the dulcimer together. <laughs> oh, I know this thing. I just googled it too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. So we're going to pretend that I carry that around and just whip it out and it's easy and it doesn't cost me any actions or anything. I'm going to whip out the dulcimer and I'm going to sing, I could, I could never lead, lead a life of misery like you live in. And I'm going to cast Vicious Mockery. Whoa, our first Vicious Mockery of the campaign. Read that description. You unleash a string of insults laced with subtle enchantments at a creature you can see within range. And the range is 60 feet. If the target can hear you, it must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or take 1d4 psychic damage. And I think I'm actually 2d4 now and have disadvantage on the next attack roll it makes before the end of its next turn. Whoa. Oh. So the save is wisdom 15. Let's do it. Okay. So this is happening before you like move away from the snake? No, I moved first. I like ran away and kind of like in a very silly, cowardly way. And then from behind the bones, I was like, you suck. <laughs> that is a seven. Yeah. Fuck yeah. He's going to take three whole three points damage. of psychic damage. Two and a one. Hard to hurt a snake's feelings, but you did it. Mm, yeah. <laughs> All right. And you know what? That snake is going to come for you now. That is, uh, it is his turn. Does he have 60 feet of movement? He does not, but he's, he's coming for you. Cool. I'll do it. Get him. Get him. All right. He can't quite get to you, so he's going to settle for attacking gravy instead. Is the pile of bones, though, <laughs> does it act as like a... Uh, Cover? Yeah. I'm so glad you asked, Morgan. It acts as both cover and higher ground, since we now have characters that can use both of those elements. Mm. Aren't higher ground and cover sort of counterintuitive? Well, if you were on top of it, it would be just the higher ground. (laughs) And because you're behind it, (laughs) it's cover. Okay. So it's not an and so much as an or. Yeah. You could stand on top of it and like pick up a bone and cover a little bit of yourself. Right? No, exactly. Right. There no, you. Yeah. Let's see. It's going to make two attacks against you, Gravy. One with its bite. The six. This is for bringing Fondord into this, damn it. That's this right. Is and a 16. This is vindictive. Neither of those will hit. So it, it snaps at your ankle and it whips at you with its tail, but Gravy deftly jumps out of the way. Oh, and it was also supposed to have disadvantage on those attack rolls, but... All right, but it fucking missed, so... Well, but it could roll a critical miss, couldn't it? It could, yeah. I can roll again, just in case. And then hurt itself? Let me, let me roll again. Tie itself in a knot? Yeah, there yep. you go. Bite its own tail, swallow itself like an Ouroboros. <laughs> oh my god. That's a 20. And that is a 1. Yeah. Thank you, Morgan. Yeah. So you know what I'm going to say is that this second attempt at the tail wipe, it actually like sort of flips itself. And I I don't know how a snake can be prone, but that snake is now prone. (laughs) I feel like a prone snake should have to just be like balancing on its tail like it's a ballet dancer, like on toe. And it's really awkward. (laughs) Or its teeth are doing are on the ground for some reason. Or it like bites into the some dirt and gets stuck there or something. Mm -hmm. One more snake. This one's coming for you, Vardos. Same as before, one bite and one tail whip. That's a 22. Oof. And an 11. So the 22 will hit. You are going to take five damage. And Vardas, you are up. You have been tail whipped by said snake. All right. I am going to try to slice his ass in half with my long sword. Oh, Ooh, fuck nice. yeah. Nice. 14. 14, yeah, I think that hits. Yup. And it'll do a four whopping damage. Four damage. <laughs> and then as a bonus action, mm-hmm. I'm going to cast Sanctuary over the only person that didn't run away like a fucking coward over here is Gravy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I am a wizard, excuse me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah so that's fine. That's fine. That's huh? fine. You do yeah. your thing. You don't need it. Uh, um, listen, oh, I didn't give you bit. <laughs> I didn't bitch about you doing it last day. 
So you ward a creature within range against attack until the spell ends. Any creature who targets the warded creature with an attack or a harmful spell must first make a wisdom saving throw on a failed save. The creature must choose a new target or lose the attack or spell. This spell doesn't protect against area effects such as explosions or fireballs. All right. Uh, did you just do like a magic thing to help me? Thank you. Yeah. I, sh- I sure did. Who's a good boy? Now, Noah, are you aware of Divine Smite? I am not aware of Divine Smite. So this is, this is the Paladin's big fucking gun. If you look under your feats and traits, I'm going to read this now. You can choose to do it this turn or not, but I thought I'd introduce it to our audience just so they know. When you hit with a melee weapon attack, melee. You what is the word? Yeah, What's the right you. one? I never it's remember. Melee. It's like melee. melee. Yeah, it's like the nuclear. I never remember which one's the real one. Melee. 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 Accent aigu. Yeah. All right. I'm sorry. Did you speak French as though to help me? Yes. <laughs> okay. Don't you claim to speak French? Yeah. And like read Proust or something to bother you. <laughs> Oh, you said, dude, you said Proust. I thought you said books. <laughs> Proust books. I'm an e-reader. <laughs> All right. So Divine Smite, when you hit an enemy with a melee weapon attack, you can expend one spell slot to deal 2d8 extra radiant damage to the target plus 1d8 for each spell level higher than first for a max of 5d8 damage. and plus 1d8 against undead or fiends. And spoiler alert, a whole lot of the shit you're going to meet this season are fiends. Yeah, I feel like there will be some undead there too. All right. No, that's good to know, but I don't think I'm going to need it against this little snake. I think he'll be... No, yeah, I just wanted to introduce it to no, the I podcast appreciate it. in case I appreciate you... Know. Steph, do you or Gravy have two attacks per action yet or no? I do. I do. Well, I have two. I, have, I can do a bonus uh, uh, action as a second attack if I use a, a weapon attack, so... Actually, you do get two attacks per action plus a bonus attack. Oh, okay. Well, then I'm going to... Yeah, so do I. Oh, cool. I, I did not know that. You know what? I'm not going to look... I'm not going to look at Gift Horse in the mouth. That's, what, <laughs> that, that's, that's not what it says in my thing. But It's really small font under actions. <laughs> but yeah, so I, could, I can just like hack at it, this motherfucker again. Hack him again. All right. That'll be a 20. Yeah. Oh, that'll hit. Yeah, I feel like that'll hit. And a nine damage. Nine. This fuck. snake is looking rough. Yes. Picked the wrong ombre to fuck with. Can you make it look rough on the map? I cannot do anything. <laughs> 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 he couldn't even stop us from creating Fondord a bunch of times and putting. They him in gave there. me the thing, and they were like, "Here's what you can do." And I was like, "Oh, but you can do like other stuff on these too." And they were like, "Yeah, those are for our more." core players and I was like yikes yeah. <laughs> did you mean to say that out loud about me to Just me? be clear this lake of fire and hell is a very small lap pool on like you know <laughs> yeah. somebody's roof look I just created a giant frog how dare you He's right up here now. He's watching this whole thing. You and know laughing. what? Now he's on the snake side. How do you like you that? You know what? Now I created a tiny frog because you said that. <laughs> he's on Every our enemy side. you create on my map. <laughs> and he's on our side. He's fighting you now. <laughs> oh, God. What did I do? These two snakes are in a fight and they cancel each other out. Those two frogs just killed themselves. Oh, no. <laughs> Romeo and Juliet style. I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to add so many fucking frogs. <laughs> they croaked. Because <laughs> <laughs> die. <laughs> I added way too many frogs and now I can't move around. You Wait, added what? way too many frogs. What have you learned? I listen, listen. You had too many frogs. You live with the consequences. All right. It's different snake's turn now. Uh, he's going to go for Vardos as well. He sees that his buddy needs help. So he's going to come in for some Vardos chomps. No, that's, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Jags are up seven. Nothing. I can take it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to help you with those snakes in a second. We do everything in like weird order. You know what I'm saying? But No, I get it. it. I get yeah. it. Yeah, you have to wait your turn. Yep. Mm-hmm. Meta. <laughs> so little, uh, little demon devil guy on top of the stack of bones. He just doesn't do anything. No. I mean, so far, he's going to attack us once we've beat all of these guys. I'm guessing he's going to have a turn. Yeah. Oh, is he? All right. Oh, I feel. I, feel, I thought he would wait until we were done with the snakes and then he would. Turn out to be a, a an enemy. All right. Seven and 19? Yeah, 19 hits. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. That will be 
four damage. A tail whip for that one. Little little tail whip from the snick. That's literally the last thing on the whole actions thing, and that's the only place that says it. You can attack twice instead of once. And I'm like, that's important <laughs> shit. Why would you not put that up front? front center. It's the very last Top. thing you have to scroll all the way to the bottom on actions <laughs> all. All right. One last snake to go. That's weird. That it's just like, and double your abilities. Oh, like oh also, by the way, yeah. just two, two attacks. <laughs> I like that you're moving it slow and inchy like a snake. On the <laughs> <laughs> Come for gravy. Gravy. Did you call me gravy? Is it melee or gravy? I made a person can't pronounce gravy's name joke that I was so pleased with in the very, very first episode. And now in my head, I call your character gravy all the time. And I fucked it up on the first episode. I don't remember that joke. You Will did, you reenact it? You? Yes. It's fine. Don't appreciate my genius. <laughs> That's a one. So this snake comes barreling past you and just snaps in the other direction, just completely misses you. And Gravy, you are up. All right. So I'd like to start by using the, um, the sentient and charismatic personality of my sword to try to talk down the fire snakes a little bit. As an action? Sure. It can only scream when it hits things right now. So it can only scream something, something? Yes, what we settled on is that it only screams when it hits things. That is the extent of its sentience right now. Oh, I don't want it to scream. No, no, I just want it to uh, talk. Yeah, but what he's saying is that it can't do that. It cannot do that. Okay, but it can it, But it can really, really scream loudly things once I hit something with it? No, just when it suffers from the impact of you hitting things with it. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> I, I can't like... In my head, my sword is... Uh, kind of like a really chill, like a like a yoga teacher, yoga instructor type of thing. You know, really relaxed kind of Zen personality. Can talk them down a little bit. No, no, it just screams when you hit stuff. That's all you know about this sword right now. That doesn't yeah. sound like a Zen, uh, like a yoga instructor. Yeah, that, at that all. doesn't sound pretty Zen. Because I'm I'm reading right here, and I'm also kind of worldly. Or Terry Lai is Terry Lai admires great beauty, music, fine art, poetry. I took all that away on episode one. I don't remember that happening. <laughs> but the audience does. Yeah, let, let, let's face it, dude. He literally flung us into a fucking pit of fire on cots, and we didn't remember that. So, yeah, so we can't know. use we didn't remember it as an excuse. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. All right, so uh, I don't have spells. I, I'm a tacky guy. I'm just a fighter. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attack the one that's closest to me first. Excellent. Swing that sword, baby. Okay, that's 21 to hit. Oh, that'll hit. Fuck yeah. Nice. Nice. I'm going to do some slashing damage in the amount of 10. Oh. Fuck yeah. Big hunking chunk comes out of this snake here. Um, I will do the thing where I can attack twice and hit the same one again. Yeah, do it. That's a nine to hit. That will not hit. Mm. Okay. I would like to use my second wind. As a bonus action, Ooh. I can attack again. Oh, no, not second wind. Action surge. I can take one additional action on my turn. Nice. Yes. So like four hits. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, right, because it's a whole action and I can do two. So yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attack again, same one. Hit me with it. Hit a critical. That's a 15 to hit. Uh, that will hit. Nice. Fuck yeah. And it's going to hit for 12 damage. Oh, that snake is gonzo. Nice. All right. Exactly. Kill it. Now. Now, because I killed something, I get a bonus. Mm-hmm. Read that description for everybody so they're not confused. So on my turn, when I score a critical hit with a melee weapon or reduce a creature to zero hit points with one, I can make one melee weapon attack as a bonus action. Before I make that melee attack with a heavy weapon that I'm proficient with, I can choose to take a minus five penalty to the attack roll to add plus 10 to the attack's damage. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I think I'm going to do that thing. I'm going to roll the dice on that and take the minus five to add the plus 10. Okay, so just keep in mind, you have two attacks left. One regular attack that you just got from your action surge. Right. And one bonus attack, which you can take the minus five on. So give me the regular attack first. Okay, and then we'll circle back to the thing where I changed my... Rats. Right. Okay. Are you attacking the snake that is in front of you towards the lake or behind you towards the big pile of bones? 
I'm going to attack the one that is in front of Vardos and closest to me of the two next to Vardos. Fantastic. Roll that dice for me, baby. All right. That's a 17 to hit. Nice. That'll hit. And slashing damage of nine. Fuck. Nine. I'd already nice. hit that one a couple of times, hadn't I? Yes. And that one is dead. All right. So now I'm rolling for the bonus action. I've got a minus five on to hit, but I have a plus 10. But you I get a plus hit. 10 if you hit to damage. Yeah. Got it. Okay. All right. <laughs> rolling to hit. All right, that's a 10 to hit. That's a 15, and that will hit. Nice. And this is slashing damage of 10 plus 10, 20. Jesus. 20. Oh, wow. man. And this is, I, I just hit the one to my left next to Vardos also. Yeah, and that snake is dead too. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> nice. Get it, Gravy. The snake slayer. Damn. Kazam. Good boy. I'd like to taunt, I say, that's you. You sound like that. <laughs> All right. What a turn for Gravy. All right. Ooh. Snake number one is up. Well, and he's still being held by uh, a chum's hand, right? I'd like to end with like a tired dad thing where I'm like, Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> getting too old for this shit. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Strength check against your spell save DC, which mm -hmm. is 14. Mm hmm. So it's going to try and break out of this grasp here. Mm, you go ahead and try. That's an 18. That's a 19, actually. Ooh. Ooh. But that does use up his action. So now he's just going to move over there and try and get you. Now, can, can she? Oh, it would, it would take another action to use the hand yeah. again, wouldn't it? That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm allowed to move it and use it again. But it would, it would, it would be an action. Mm -hmm. So it's all up in your biz. Mm. Achoo, you were up. This snake has used its action, but it is now standing in front of you menacingly. Okay. Actually, reach for a different creature. Fuck. Or move. Ah, God damn it. All right. I'm just breaking concentration with that and doing something else. Fun. All right. Earth hands vanish in a mm -hmm. puff of dust. I'm going to witch bolt this fucker. Oh, read that spell description. All right. So a witch bolt. A beam of crackling blue energy lances out toward a creature within range, forming a sustained arc of lightning between you and the target. Make a ranged spell attack against that creature. On a hit, the target takes 1d12 lightning damage or two, depending on which level I cast it at. And on each of your turns for the duration, you can use your action to deal 1d12 lightning damage to your target automatically. Nice. The spell ends if you use your action to do anything else. Do you say any sweet shit? Oh, oh, I say some sweet shit. Are you ready for this? Mm hmm I say, hey, did you come here for another curse? <laughs> Got him. Got him. <laughs> and uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll for attack. A choom. A choom. This is a good time. That was a 21 to hit. Oh, shit. Oh, that'll hit. All right, and I cast it at a level two, so that's 2d12 damage. Oh, shit. Mm -hmm. Nice. Now, we are kicking these snakes' asses as though they were the saints. And 12 we were the damage. Shag 12, 12 and damage. <laughs> one minute and 51 seconds into the second quarter, and we were already up 14-3. It's, it's amazing how well we're doing. We're doing so well. I was just using that as an analogy. Easy. <laughs> a deep... Podcast audience, there's a football game happening, just so just you in know. Case you, were, so you, know. You, were, you, can, you can tell how far ahead we record these, actually, if you go back and... In case you think Noah is sliding into psychosis, <laughs> <laughs> there is a football game happening. And you got to let your players watch football and you got to let your players snack. Those are the rules here on D&D Minus. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. I'm not watching football, by the way. I'm just like, I have the score up. on my yeah, game he's cast. Not, sure. The volume isn't on. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> Lucinda's not in the background cheering. We've just edited it out. <laughs> I mean, she is in the background. She's like, just she's farther yeah. in the background. You can't hear her. She's just quiet. Yeah. Bonus actions. Movement. Uh, no, I don't have any bonus actions. I'm just going to um, lick my paw like a, mm, yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> All right. Just, just, just groom a whisker or two. Well, right, do the lick in the paw and then up to the ear with the paw thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. That's exactly. Just get that spit everywhere. You're, you're a lot cleaner now. That's good that you do that. <laughs> All right. That snake is looking rough. Damien, you are up. I am just going to like move one foot 
further down, stay behind cover and kind of peek my head out. And <laughs> I'm going to, the dulcimer is already out. I don't need to whip it out. So it's already ready to play. Hey, mm-hmm. Whip it out. And I say, I would, I would rather <laughs> die than live a life of misery with you in it. And I'm going to cast vicious mockery again on the fire snake engaged with a chum. Nice. It is a 15 wisdom saving throw. This does like ridicule damage. What happens? It, it does, does psychic, it, it hurt. Psychic. It does hurt feeling damage. Love yeah. That. It gets so depressed. <laughs> That's a two. <laughs> Great. The fire snake takes a SRI <laughs> and it's not as depressed anymore. Ah, <laughs> that's why we pay you the big bucks. That is going to be six psychic damage. Yeah, that six psychic damage will do it. Just the, the combination of being so thoroughly blasted by what appears to just be a house cat and then having a goth kid yell at it from behind a big pile of bones just loses its will to live and dissolves into a pool of fire. <laughs> <laughs> say something, say something taunty. Do a taunty thing at the end. I'm going to do like just a quick scale on my lucimer, on my dulcimer to kind of be like, okay, I did it. Next one up. And then that's it. Nice. 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 Sweet scale. Got him. All right. <laughs> Didn't do like a sting, like a. Bra, 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 bra. Vardos, you are up. There is one prone snake on the floor behind you. So I'm going to do, I'd like to do a dive roll, Eli. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Shazam. And I would like to uh, hack at this motherfucker with my long sword one more time. Show him what's what. Holy shit, that was a sweet dive roll. All right, that's going to be a 21. Okay, that's with advantage, by the way, because he's prone. Oh, right. I don't think I need it. Wait, no, I'll roll again because I could get this. Because you can get a crit. Yeah. And I did. Crit. And you did, in fact, get it. So yeah, roll that crit damage. I'm going to do 10 damage. 10 damage. That was actually low for a crit. Yeah, it was 2d8 and one of them was a 1. So ah, yeah, 2d8 plus 2. So One of them was a 7. So. There you go. All right. And then, but I can attack him again because I can do You fucking sure can. If he's still alive. And I still have advantage on that, right? Oh, yeah, baby. Yep. And I get another crit. Yeah. And another <laughs> fucking crit. Oh, oh my God. I'll do, oh, and I'll do 17 damage, one shy of the most I could have done there. So. so you all watch as Vardos, in an extreme overshow of strength, <laughs> does a dive roll across the battlefield and just hurls this sword down, chopping this snake <laughs> into incredibly small, grisly pieces. Well, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop it in half and half of that it is going to fly up and then I'm going to chop that half in half as it's coming down. You know? Just super hard. Yes. Sashimi. Grab the head and punt it now. And be like, <laughs> no! <laughs> but then, from behind you, a frost giant... No, I'm just fucking... <laughs> <laughs> So stupid. Demi Gorgon, guys. Claw. Wait, how Claw's did you do that? Back. Wait, wait, wait. Stop creating Demi Gorgons in the middle of my battle. Mm, there's a whole token browser, though. There is a token browser, but right now, right now, we're fighting the fire snake. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm LLC, copyright 2023, all rights reserved.